Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and in today's tips and tricks video, I'm gonna be showing you how to route David Oliver's drum kit in your DAW, so that way you can mix it with your own third-party plugins. So it's a really cool way to get a little bit more into engineering land, being able to have a little bit more control over the sounds if you wanna mix them using your favorite tools. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set it up in Cubase, because that's the DAW that I use. I'm sure there's very similar methods for other DAWs, but for this one, we're gonna be looking at Cubase. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is start getting your outputs set up because you wanna be able to have all those stereo outputs loaded up in contact so that way you can route those within your DAW. So let's go ahead and get our output loaded up. So here you go. I've already done this. So you're gonna see that there's 16 different stereo outputs down here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up on your own. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just click this little plus icon and it's gonna take you to this little outputs window. So with the quantity, I like to set it up to 16. This is really good to just have as a default, especially if you're doing anything with like orchestral instruments and you wanna have different articulations routed out to different outputs and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and set this to 16. I'm gonna keep the number of channels to two since we're dealing with stereo. Right here, we're gonna go ahead and select this. So basically from one to 16, it's just gonna remake all these different channels. So let's go ahead and keep this checked. Delete existing channels before creating new ones, yes. Make this your default configuration, yes. Let's go ahead and hit okay. So one of the other things you can do as well is save current output section state as default for, and let's do VST plugin since we're in our DAW. So then after that, you can just go ahead and delete it. And one of the things I like to do is loading it up as a rack instrument. So let's go to contact, load this up. It's gonna say, do you want to create a MIDI track? Yes. Let's go ahead and create that. Now we can get rid of this down here. Let's go ahead and load up David Oliver's drum kit. All right, so we got that loaded up. Now let's go ahead and take this MIDI track and move it down here. I'm gonna go ahead and name this David Oliver's drum kit. Now this will be our MIDI track for when we do any sort of MIDI uh, programming. And then this is our output right here. We only have one assigned. So before we activate any outputs, I'll just wanna show you a little bit of the mixer page and show you how you're gonna be assigning these different outputs to the outputs that we're about to create. So, so you have kick, snare, toms, and then right here is where you're going to be assigning to these different outputs that are gonna be over here. So we're gonna use nine outputs since that's what we have as far as outputs within David Oliver's drum kit. So now when it comes to activating your outputs, all we gotta do is click on this drop down right here, go to activate outputs. So we're gonna need nine outputs. So let's go ahead and find nine. Let's just select all these. Now we have all of our different outputs created over here. We're just gonna go ahead and assign these in order. So this is how I generally like to do things. So we got our kick. I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to output one. Snare, output two, toms, output three, hi-hats, output four, five, six, seven, we got our overheads, eight, and then our room channels, nine. Now let's go ahead and activate our overhead and room channels. And then now in Cubase, you should have each individual drum assigned to their own output. So this is our kick. And then right here, we have our snare. And then we have our toms. Now doing it this way is great because it gives you a lot more control and being able to shape the sound using some of your favorite plugins to really dial in a drum mix that is exactly what you want. So sometimes doing it within contact, while you can do that, this is a little bit more of a hands-on approach, especially for all you that are getting into more engineering and more mixing and you wanna have a lot more control. So this is the way I like to do stuff. I really like to have more control as far as being able to shape all the drums the way that I want. So then after that, you can go ahead and name these accordingly. So we have our kick, then we have our snare, and then we have our toms, hi-hats, ride, crash, splash, overheads, and 
room. So when you play this, kick coming out of kick, snare coming out of snare, and then we got our crash coming out of crash. So then after that, you can start applying your own plugins. So if we want to start making some tweaks to the kick drum, we can go over here, find our Pro Q3. This is one that I really like to use. So if we go back to here. I'm going to go ahead and mute the overhead in the room so you can really hear what you're working on. So we can get a little bit of a low bump. Boost of that click. Let me go ahead and bypass it. So this is just some quick little moves. If you want to see a full tutorial on how I mix these drums in a modern rock style track, make sure to click the link up here as well if you want to watch that. So some other things I want to mention, if you're new to drum mixing and you don't really know exactly what you want to do, but you want to start dabbling and routing out your drums and maybe playing around with some presets just to kind of get you there a little bit closer quicker, you can go ahead over here and then in the mixer page, if you go over here to this master presets, we have some really cool presets that we've made for you to get you some instant results pretty quickly, just to kind of get you a little bit closer to a more final polished sound. So let's go ahead and load up one of these. So I have one that I made, it's called Rock and Room. It's pretty cool, just like basic rock type kit and sort of like a big room sound. Now let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. So you have some presets that you can also work with and build off of, or you can just start from scratch and do it your own way. All right, so that about wraps up this tips and tricks video on how to route David Oliver's drum kit within Cubase. Now this doesn't only work with drums, this is something that you can use for anything in contact. So if you really want to get into a little bit more hands-on approach to mixing and using the individual outputs, this is a really cool feature that you should be using to have a lot more control over your mixing and overall sound. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on future videos like these as well as future walkthroughs and other videos as well. And until next time, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.